I don't know how the kerchief works, but it is slenderizing. <laughs> So I don't know who was talking about it. I was eavesdropping when you guys came in. And uh, man, I am with you. This weather is perfect outside for me. I figured out a long time ago, I am better looking the colder it gets out. Because I put like a couple extra layers on, my gut looks like a muscle at that point. This is, this is just one big pectoral muscle under here, <laughs> ladies. I dress all winter like I'm ready to go bear hunting at a moment's notice, you know? I got like coveralls on and a kerchief and... <clears throat> I don't know how the kerchief works, but it is slenderizing. <laughs> I, uh, so I figured out also I'm better looking in different parts of the country because I worked in, yeah, I worked in, <laughs> it's regional, sir. <laughs> I, uh, I worked in South Florida last year over Christmas week and, um, and I figured out that in Miami, I am not attractive at all, actually. <laughs> I moved, I live in New York City now, or right outside, even there, it's iffy. But in Wisconsin, I am on a calendar in Wisconsin. It's just me in a camouflage thong holding a chainsaw in the woods, you know? I told the photographer, I'm like, get me from behind, I'll get the cover of this thing, man. And you take that any way you want, all right? This is, I'm just holding a mirror up to you guys. <clears throat> man, you guys are good. You. you guys are all so earnest and nice here. Plus, it's so beautiful in Provo. How does anybody ever argue? It's like you never fight over a parking spot. You're like, I was here. What are you talking about? I've been waiting 10 minutes for this. And then you look over at the mountains and the snow on the high peaks and the clouds going around the lower peaks, and you're like, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. You know what? Give me a hug, friend, and you take the parking spot. You know? It's... That doesn't happen. <laughs> that doesn't happen where I live now. <clears throat> so I, um, man, you guys good. So I, uh, I don't know if uh, you know this about me. I'm not very brave, but I did do 10 nights of shows in Germany at U.S. Army posts. And uh, yeah, that's the most dangerous thing I did is go where they have beer everywhere. Not that that would be appropriate here. I'm not for it, of course. <laughs> I don't know where those hangovers came from. An immaculate, I had immaculate hangovers when I was there. So I did, uh, I did, I was, one morning I came, you know, I came in and the sergeant major from the battalion I was working for that night saw me. He's like, hey man, you need to go to a spa and it'll kind of steam everything out. So I go to the spa in, in Bavaria. What he didn't tell me is that when the Germans in that part of Germany go to the spa, they go textile free. <laughs> right. So they're all naked. I walk in in my bathing suit, which comes to like here, actually. You know, like one woman looks at me, he's like, maybe he's here, he's here to fix something. You know, like only two people wear pants to the spa, the American guy and the plumber, pretty much. And um, I'm trying to think of a nice way to clean this up. <clears throat> you know the body hair grooming standards that we've gotten used to in America, like, like when I go to the beach, you know, it takes me like almost a good week of lowering all of my body hair to where I feel I'm acceptable. That has not hit Bavaria. <laughs> I bumped into one guy like a gorilla. I was like, excuse me, ma'am, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just here to fix something. And I kind of slid by and it was, uh, it was awkward. I did the coolest thing I've ever done there. I got to fly. Uh, I did a welcome home ball for an Apache helicopter battalion. That's the attack helicopter. And uh, I got to do a welcome home ball and I got to fly the simulator with the lieutenant colonel who ran the battalion. And I got in there, I picked a mission plan and how we were gonna attack and the armament and everything. And I gotta tell you, I strafed the hell out of Newark, New Jersey. I leveled it. <laughs> See, now if we were closer to Newark, that would have gotten an applause break, actually. <laughs> And uh, I'm coming around for a second pass and I'm firing the chain gun and the Hellfire missiles and I'm screaming in the cockpit and the colonel goes, Dave, take it easy. So I got on the radio, I'm like, don't use my name on an open radio. <laughs> I said, up here, I'm Vanguard One. <laughs> He's like, you gave yourself a call sign? I said, yeah, I gave myself a call sign when I saw Top Gun 20 years ago. It just never made sense until we were here in a tractor trailer on the ground in Germany. And I got out, I gave him a letter. I'm like, make sure my mom gets this. He's like, what, in case something happens at the show, tough guy? I'm like, all right, you got a point on that one. I have a, uh, 
I have a buddy who's a priest. This is gonna sound like a joke. And when he was first um, <laughs> priested, um, he was stationed in Germany, so he, he loves comedy. So he's like, hey man, when you get over there, you gotta do a lot of fart material. <laughs> and like exit in German is Aus fart. <laughs> An entrance is Ein fart. So he's like, the word fart is in every building. <laughs> so I was like, listen, Father Scott, you, you handle the homily, I'll, I'll take care of the comedy. And then I had one gig and it was for all these older, like 80, 90 year old volunteers in Stuttgart on the base. And I, you know, I was losing them and I went right into all of my Ausfart material and they loved it. I got back to my hotel room and I was like, dude, I need another 10 minutes of fart stuff by tomorrow. I, I don't care if you have a funeral or a wedding, I need you to write, all right? Right, right now, I, uh, people ask me like, was it weird going to Germany being Jewish? And I gotta tell you, I didn't have one weird moment. Everybody was fantastic. I mean, it was, I loved being there. I, I had one weird moment. I checked into this big Department of Defense facility in the Alps, and the guy didn't look up when he checked me in. He's typing into the computer, and he's like, uh, Herr Goldstein, welcome to Germany. And then he looked up to where he thought my eyes would be historically, you know, which is like here. And when he finally looked me in the face, I looked at him, I said, hey man, we're all this big now, so watch your ass. <laughs> I was gonna try and rewrite that, but there's just no way to capture that without, I mean, it's in the Bible. I was like, hey man, I'm just a prototype. The next guy's gonna be able to go out in the sun, all right? <laughs> the Israelis have been working on this for 80 years in the desert, but we're coming. It was, uh, so I, uh, it, was, it was great. I like the, um, so I live now in a town that's exactly like this audience, but completely reversed. I live in West New York, New Jersey. Yes, that is the reaction it gets. Absolutely nothing. And uh, it's where the oldest Cuban city north of Miami. So everybody in town who's older than, you know, 45 is, everybody's Cuban or Dominican and a lot of Central Americans now, and me. And the first morning I moved there, I tried to pay for some breakfast and the guy behind the counter looked at me and he said, officer, your money's no good in here. Thanks for keeping our streets safe. <laughs> I didn't even get it at first. And then I was like, oh, well, top of the morning to you then there, lad. And Thank you for including me. You know, like, one tall white guy, he just assumes I'm some Irish cop from the Untouchables, you know? And I've been sitting in a time machine for 90 years with my Thompson gun until they needed me in West New York. Any cops here? We could thank you for your... Okay, let's move on. <laughs> I saw you looking around, ma'am. You're getting nervous like I am, because when people look around, there's no cops. The thieves are like, I could take this place right now. <laughs> it's just kind of, I, uh, I, man, I didn't realize cops make out. I have not paid for a meal since I moved to West New York. I got four tires, new tires for my car. I got a free gym membership so I can fight crime more effectively. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I figured out I'm not playing a cop. I'm playing a corrupt cop. <laughs> right. And it's more fun, because I'm always the nice guy in real life. And in West New York, I get to be the dirty cop. And I'm selling it. I'm drinking way too much. I'm lying to my wife about where I've been every night till 4 a.m. You know, I don't even have a wife. This is all in my imagination. I've, just, I've created this dirty cop character. I even wardrobe it right. I wear a black leather trench coat, because that's what Denzel wore in Training Day. And I just want to kind of have it down. We have... Um, the only people who have heard of it is because we have more Catholic churches, and I think churches in general, than any city in the country per person. So they know of my law enforcement background in town, so they asked me to join the Neighborhood Watch because we guard the nativity scenes every December. So I'm a manger ranger for three weeks every December. I got into it, I made a whole uniform up. I had a blue jumpsuit, I took one of those, you know, heck, Smokey the Bear cop hats, I glue gun the wise men on it, I look good. You know, it was a Jägermeister giveaway hat, but I had put the wise men on it, and I knew that one was going to be iffy in here. It was a non-caffeine giveaway hat. It was a Sprite hat. I, was, I took a Sprite hat, and I glue-gunned on the wise men. Thank you. You guys give me another week, I'll give you Joseph Smith's biography when I'm up here. I, uh, <laughs> so I, uh, 
I gotta tell you, I, you know, any day with a glue gun is a fun day, right, ladies? It's not a bedazzler day, but it's still a pretty good day with the glue gun. I like, I got in here early today because I just wanted to drive out and see if you guys had a Michaels around here. I just, I like to do a little beating just to sort of center myself before shows. <laughs> There's actually a Michael's near my house, and I go in because they have an awesome old-time candy counter. So you go in, and you get all these weird taffy things and gum that comes in the little sack, like it's gold that you mined. And I took it up to the counter, and the woman was like, is this really why you came in? Like, I think I insulted her. I was just like, um, and to find out when the scrapbooking class starts, because I had the glue gun, and I figure, you know, some seashells and some funny pictures. And I was just like, I'm just, I'm just gonna get out of here. So I, um, I figured this out. You know that, that saying, like, isn't it obvious? I figured out, like, things aren't obvious unless you know the answer. Because like, I guess my shows in Germany went well, and the Army Europe guy, <coughs> excuse me, said, uh, I think we can use you in Afghanistan. And I was like, as a comedian, right? <laughs> like, not as bait. You know, I just... You're not just gonna like stake me out in an empty field and wait, you know? Not enough hunters here tonight, okay. And the guys who are hunters, thank you for taking a night off from illegally spotlighting deer to come out and see the show this evening. And I, uh, so I told my mom about it. I have not done them yet, but I told my mom, I said, listen, it's 10 nights of shows, it's perfectly safe. She said, oh, you're gonna go over there and do more shows for the troops? Uh, like, no, I, for the Taliban, when we get over there, Mom, I just, they hate Americans, but they love a good knock-knock joke, just like everybody else. I just, I just have to rewrite my act so the woman is the butt of every joke, but other than that, you know, I, uh, I said, of course, for the troops, isn't that obvious? And she said, she said, I don't know, you do so many weird shows. And I'll give you this, last, not this past month, um, but... I, uh, I did last year in October, I did a, uh, a gig for a swingers group in Stowe, Vermont. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I can see you thinking, how is he going to clean this up for dry bar? <laughs> and that's it. That's the story. Good night, everybody. I, so I, um, you know, and by the way, it's nice seeing a couple of you guys again. We'll keep it on the down low. <laughs> You got it working here in Utah. I'm not going to ruin it for you. I just, I recognize the mole. That's all I'm saying. And I, uh, so I'll give you that as a weird show. And now I'm bragging. A couple years ago, I was the keynote speaker at the Lower Delaware Bowling Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Thank you. Wow. What are you guys, a bowling league? Let's go see the show on Friday. I, uh, so I was just... Um, I'll give you those as weird shows. Like, Mom, if I go perform for the Taliban, I'm going to get my head cut off on the Internet. And that's when it dawned on me, things aren't obvious unless you know the answer. Like, I went into Dunkin' Donuts near my apartment, and I ordered a coffee and a cinnamon raisin bagel. I said, I'll take a cinnamon raisin bagel if they're soft. The woman came up, handed me a coffee and a bag, and she says, the bagels are really hard, so I gave you two. <laughs> and I'm like... Isn't it obvious I got something going on in here if I'm asking for soft food, you'd think. You know, <clears throat> like I went, my three of my friends and I just went to play basketball. And I went in the 7-Eleven near me and I bought four waters, four Gatorades, and two bags of Doritos in case we needed to carb up. <laughs> and the woman at the counter says, do you want a bag with this? And I was like, you mean for these 10 items? <laughs> What is the cutoff? You don't have to ask that question anymore. I'm like, you know what? I don't need a bag. I'm with Cirque du Soleil. I'm just going to juggle it all out to the car. In fact, I'm really good. So I'm going to walk on my hands and just juggle it with my feet. My nearly a dozen items. <laughs> Isn't that obvious? I got 10, 10 things here. There's a guy on my street, George, <clears throat> in case he's watching, uh, who just got out of prison. <laughs> And he saw me, and he's like, hey, Dave, gun to your head. 78 Yankees or 98 Yankees? Bless you. That's, that's a sign you're not working the Astrodome, when you can hear somebody sneeze and react to it. And I, uh, so I, uh, he's like, 78 Yankees or 98 Yankees? And I'm like, ah, 78 Yankees. Reggie Jackson, 
those guys. He's like, all right, knife to your throat. And he, this guy's been in prison, so I don't know if these are just expressions to him. He's like, knife to your throat, steak or lasagna? I was like, both. He's like, all right. He's like, all right. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Squatting over a bear trap. And I was like, dude, just stop. All right. <laughs> Isn't it obvious to you that I'm saying exactly what I think you want to hear so that I can run away and then never talk to you again? <laughs> You know, at one point in my career, I was on unemployment. And I remember taking my unemployment check to the bank, and the teller looks at it, he's like, what do you want to do with the unemployment check? You want to cash that or deposit it? I'm like, yeah. What do I want to do with the unemployment check? I'm like, you know what? I'm glad you're a banker. Let's roll half into my 401k. <laughs> Give me the other half in cash. What's that leave me with? 41 bucks, all right. I'm like, you know what, give that to me in euros. I'm gonna go travel, I think, with the $40 of fun money I'm making every week. I'm like, dude, it's an unemployment check. Just give it to me in canned food if you want. You know? Just wanna eat till my big dry bar gig comes through and now I'm back on the clock again. I'm good. So I'll tell you how I've been meeting women and it works. You guys are so good, you're laughing at setups. <laughs> next, next, next weekend, I'm back in, on the East Coast. I need you all in Pittsburgh. So just book it. I, uh, so here's, here's what works. Internet dating. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Yeah. Every NFL game I watch, every other commercial is either Viagra or Match.com. And I'm the only guy in here using both? Come on. So, you know... But, Here's the thing, you type out that first essay on, the, you know, and that's when like, it's like 2.30 in the morning and you're sitting in West New York, New Jersey in your underpants, and that's when you realize my life did not work out the way I expected it to. I, mean, I used to drive a Jeep and have abs, and now I need the computer to fall, fall in love. And uh, so then, you know, you write the essay. Did you guys meet online? Oh, okay, sorry, all right. <laughs> You want to talk about it in front of 300 people? Anyway, so I, uh, you write the essay and you want to be funny and charming. You want to work in that you like kids, but not in a creepy way. And then at the bottom of the essay, you're like, do I write or best offer? I'm like, no, that's, yeah. Right, it's just like real life, that's implied, you know. And I've been on internet dating, I was an early adopter. I was on internet dating when the internet was a CB radio and every date was at a truck stop. I mean, I've been on it for a while. <laughs> this close to Route 80, I knew you guys would get that. I, uh... <clears throat> so then, you know, here's the problem. You're not lying about yourself, you're just polishing the apple. Like, you're picturing yourself on your very best day ever. I could picture it was like summer 2004, I was at the beach, I was really lean because I'd had diarrhea all week. <laughs> right. I look great. My friends are like, dude, are you working out again? I'm like, what do you mean again? You know, I'm, I'm like, yeah, man, I'm working out. I'm eating only the right foods now. Just expired dairy products. That's it. <laughs> like, but get a lot of shots of this because the gut is coming back. I'm going to eat my weight in crab cakes before we leave here. And so that's the guy I'm picturing. But you forget everybody else is doing that. Like, I, I like curvy women. You know, there's one thing you can kind of pick people by body type when you do the internet dating thing, and I like, I like curvy women. Right, I know, I need a new gesture for this, because this makes me seem like I like snowman women. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, I just love the, the carrot nose, the coal eyes, the little scarf, the way she melts and goes away every April. <laughs> right, I can... I can fish and play golf all summer and get another snowman woman in November. That's perfect. That might be a weird fetish I didn't realize. You know, I'm into snowman women. Don't tell me about it. I don't want to... And, uh... So, like, you could put in, so I like curvy women. And somebody told me, you gotta compare yourself to a celebrity. So I described myself. I actually have been with my girlfriend for a while now, but, you know, when we met, Michael Phelps was hot. So I described myself as looking a lot like Michael Phelps. <laughs> right. Thank you for laughing at me on that. <laughs> this guy doesn't look like... I do that 8,000 calorie a day diet thing he does. I just don't do any of the swimming to burn it off. 
And uh, so we meet for we meet for a cup of coffee. I almost said we meet for a drink. We met for a Sprite at a place. And uh, she gets out of the car, and for a second, I'm thinking, like, I hope she doesn't think I really look like Michael Phelps. But then I'm looking at her, I'm thinking, she's not so much curvy as she is round. You know? <laughs> curvy means more than one curve, you know? That's why it's not pronounced curve. Exactly. I know, it's a tough one. Stick with me. I'm the same nice guy I was four minutes ago. <laughs> I know this is a tough one. I, uh, I love going to weddings, and I had a woman, we, we never even met, we just texted a couple times. She invited me to go to a wedding with her. So we show up, we met in the parking lot before the wedding to come up with a backstory. We came up with a thing that she had saved me from drowning in a pool that summer. Just, I wanted her to look heroic. So we, we walk in, her friends are like, oh, Susie, you didn't tell us you had a new boyfriend? And I just got hit with, wave. this is Susie's new boyfriend. Susie has a new boyfriend. And after a while, I just couldn't take it. Some guy came up and he put his arm around me. He's like, I hear you're Susie's new boyfriend. I said, yeah, man, we really love each other. <laughs> she ever leaves me, I'll kill us both. <laughs> Hold on. But from then on, you're Susie's psycho boyfriend. And everybody leaves you alone at that point. <laughs> I had like 90 pounds of roast beef because nobody would get between me and the guy with the knife at the carving station. You know, it was kind of... <clears throat> Excuse me. So I figured out, I'm okay, I don't know how you talk to women. We had a really cold snap about three weeks ago, and it was freezing out. I was in a coffee shop in Manhattan, and this really older woman came in, and she was having trouble getting out of her scarf and hat and everything, her overcoat. So I stood up to help her, and she gave me a look, so I sat down. And then when she finally got out of everything, she looked at me, and she said, I thought you were going to help me, young man. And I was just like, well, I, I was, but you gave me such a... Nasty look, I sat down, and she said, that was a look of gratitude. I hope you learned something. <laughs> yeah, I learned I don't understand women of any age. I was, trying to, I was trying to be a nice guy, and then I thought I insulted you, and then I'm just like, I, I don't know, I'm just gonna leave. <clears throat> so I'll tell you this, I don't know what you say to a woman who's crying. <laughs> it's a hard way to, for a comedian to start a bit. I'll tell you my worst woman crying story. Um, of course we were married. And uh, no, we were, uh, it was a big date. Walked her back to the front of her house and I was thinking like, man, I think this chick's into me. And then I look over to her and she just starts sobbing. Right, and my mind's racing. I'm thinking like, I'm sure this doesn't bother a guy in prison, but it was awkward for me. And <laughs> I looked at her, I'm like, did, did, did I do something wrong? She's like, no, you're just the first guy I've been on a date with since my fiance Cleve moved out of the house. Yeah, cleave. <laughs> cleave is the word you use when you cut something in half. So I wanted to say something nice, but in my head it kept hearing cleave, 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 cleave. So I took a deep breath. She stopped me and she said, how long does it take to get over a broken heart? I know, only women feel comfortable laughing at that. Because the guys are like, wait, I might need to know this, actually. <laughs> So you know that voice in your head? I summoned all my powers, took a deep breath, and it's hard because, you know, before I was a comedian, I was a salesman, and when you're full of crap, there's just so many directions you can go in. I wasn't gonna retire from sales and become a physicist, you know? And so I uh, took a deep, deep breath, and I looked her right in the eyes, and I said, um, I think one morning you'll wake up and you'll realize your heart was never really broken after all. There was just a little piece of it missing for a while. I know, right? I would have had it, but I laughed at the end. <laughs> I know. I can, I can write, I just can't act. Thank you guys very much.